<clears throat> Welcome to Coffee and Conversation. Today, we're going to talk about the worst 2023 goal setting advice that you'll get. That's right. I know you, you saw the title. You did a double take. But trust us, we're going somewhere. We, we've got to clear up what's the worst goal setting advice for 2023. I'm your host, Eric Twiggs. I'm the president and CEO of the What Now Movement. But I'm not alone. Also joining me is Dr. Sharon H. Porter. She is the VP of Media and Communications. We have Ted Fells is the VP of Strategy. And then we have Maisha B. Hoy, who is our Chief Marketing Officer, or whatever she's calling herself this month. Maisha, any special titles I need to know about, or is that good? Call me the key get out the vote marketing person today, because I want everybody to get out and vote on November 8th. That's right. Get out to vote. Very important. It's critical. You have a right and to do it. Thank you for those that have done early voting. Yes. I don't want to leave you out. So thank you for voting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so, so let's share the backstory of how we got to this point with the What Now movement. Some of you are watching us for the first time or listening to us on one of the podcasting platforms for the very first time. You need to know how we got to this point. So it started out with myself, Ted Phils, and Dr. Sharon. And we said, you know what? We, we want to work together. We want to join forces and really inspire people at a totally different level. We came up with this idea where we said, you know, we, we're going to get into hotel ballrooms across the country and around the world and have speakers and do summits and have events. It's going to be excellent. We had this plan and then the global pandemic happened and everything got shut down and we were forced to ask ourselves, what now? And then we started noticing within our different circles that people were constantly saying things like, you know, I have this, this venture, this idea that I want to move forward, but I'm going to wait until things get back to normal. And we talked amongst ourselves and we said, you know what, that's the last thing they need to be saying. They really need to be asking themselves, what now? So we knew we still wanted to work together and we didn't have the option of the hotel ballrooms. And we said, you know what? We should do something and start it virtually. And we need to call this thing the what now movement. Because that's the key question that you always need to ask yourself. What now? Because we're starting to get past the pandemic. But there's going to be something else. There's going to be a challenge, an obstacle that you didn't see coming. And you, instead of stopping, the key thing to do is to pivot. And you'll inspire yourself to pivot by asking that question, what now? And that's how we got here. That, that's how the What Now movement came to be. We've got a website, the What Now movement at gmail.com. Uh, that's the email, the What Now movement.com. <laughs> As my issue was giving me a journey. <laughs> I was about to say, who, who going to see any content going there? <laughs> you, can email, you can email us at the What Now movement at gmail.com. <laughs> You know, if you have if you have more questions about how we started, you could email us at that email address. But you can go to the whatnowmovement.com. That's our website. Uh, you can join us on Facebook. We've got the What Now Movement Facebook group. We've got inspirational content like what you're watching and what you're listening to. Um, that's in those places. So that's how we got here. So so now let, let's get to the worst advice. The, the worst 2023 goal setting advice, advice that you'll get. And, and it's important to lean into this part of the show because sometimes it, it helps to know what not to do before you can really know how to move forward. And, and I'll go ahead and get started and I'll throw it around to my colleagues here. The, the, one of the worst pieces of advice that I'm hearing that's floating around about goal setting is that you shouldn't set goals. Yeah, believe it or not, there's a lot of talk going around about not setting goals. Like, oh, goodness, it, you, you'll demotivate yourself. You'll feel like a failure. It'll impact your self-esteem. You know, it's not good to set goals. That That's an outdated thing. Uh, I just think that's terrible advice. And I'll certainly 
throw it around. Now, Ted, any any thoughts on why you think that's a bad idea or why that's bad advice? Well, I, well, I do think that you have to have some, uh, you know, some direction for where you're going. I mean, you just can't just kind of you don't want to be like that uh, hamster on that wheel, just kind of just rolling and rolling and rolling, not necessarily know where you're going and and then no way to you know to see if you're making progress. I mean, how can you measure yourself if you don't have any any goals? And so I definitely think you need to have some way to be able to some way to be able to to do that, to know that you can, you know, you know, where you are and and, and how and, and how you're, uh, you know, are, are you are you getting closer to there, wherever there is for you? You know, and Ted, I, I called on you first because you came to mind whenever we're having our founders meetings, myself, you, Dr. Sharon, we, we start to go down this road and you're always the one that's like, oh, stop, wait a minute. What's our goal here? Yeah, what are we trying to do? What are we really just, trying to do here? Where are we going? Just get in the car and just start driving. <laughs> <laughs> we just start driving. Mm. So, so I think that that's key. You know, it gives you a sense of direction. So I, I just think that that's a bad idea, thinking that you can not set goals and have success um, as we go into 2023. Uh, Maisha, what are your thoughts? Um, I think that if you think that not setting goals is a good idea, you need to go to our website and read all of our blogs and you need to go to our YouTube channel and listen to all of our coffee and conversations because it's just not good. But I will say the only time that I don't set goals is in my personal life, right? It's mm. not even that. It's when I'm trying to have fun. Like I hate when people go, I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a great time. Well, <laughs> for that, be in the moment, right? For those things that are just supposed, where you're just supposed to be present, be in the moment. But for business, for your education, um, for, I guess, even trying to get married, have children, you know, you got to have some kind of way of measuring the activities in your life that are bringing you to your personal satisfaction, your professional satisfaction. So not setting a goal, that's terrible advice. I would like to know who said that. <laughs> that's just terrible I mean, There's a lot of people saying it. I'm telling you, it's <laughs> it's amazing. Now you bring up some good points. I think you do need to make that distinction. Yeah, sometimes you do just need to be present and just enjoy. Um, but the other times I think you need to know where is there, right? Ooh. Yeah, I want to go there. Okay, where is there? Right. Yeah. Great right. points. Yeah. Dr. Sharon? Um, absolutely. And I think I've said it before. When the destination is clear, the path will appear. And so that is... See, see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? <laughs> see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Like, see, so you always be wondering when, them, when people had those pictures up on the wall with those quotes, I mean, where they come from? Where they come from? <laughs> as soon as you said that, that's immediately what I thought about. You will not know how to navigate your way if you don't know where you're going. And mm -hmm. so I just think it's imperative um, that goal setting is a part, especially, specifically, we're talking in business. Like you have to know what your end goal is so that you can find out how you can get there. So. I'm Absolutely. gonna post that in our in our Facebook group because as we found out in October, 53% of our group are senior level managers and CEOs. So I'm gonna post a poll to say, do you think that not setting goals is how you achieve your success? <laughs> when when the destination is clear, the path will appear. That is tweetable. That make sure you uh, keep that quote close to you. Yeah, well, especially, especially when you have people following you as oh, well. Yes. You know, if you're <clears throat> leading an organization of any type, you do need to be able to have something so that, <clears throat> so that everyone, excuse me, knows where you, you know knows where you're trying to trying to go. If not, they're gonna just be doing some stuff. And you can't get mad, and you can't get mad at them. You know what? And that is so true. Why because are you doing, why are you doing that? That is so true. I just I just had a moment there, but yes. <laughs> but basically you lead with a group because you you're leaving it to their own interpretation. And that that's just like, you know, wow, you can end up anywhere. That is so true, Ted. 
Yeah, everybody everybody has their own perspective of what we what we doing. He said, you pull them all to the side, say, what we doing? What's our plan? You'll hear. Yes. Ten, ten different perspectives. So true. May not even be close to what you think. So true. <laughs> now, great comments. I mean, I think so if you're a leader and you feel like your people are just wandering aimlessly and they don't seem to have direction, the first step is to look in the mirror, right? Mm. What, what direction? Because they're going to they're gonna do what you do. Right. Mm-hmm. What direction are you providing? What What is the roadmap that you've laid out for them? Absolutely. So that, that's the first place to look. And then, yeah, we have mostly CEOs, uh, high percentage <laughs> of leaders and CEOs following us. I mean, that's a key thing there. All right. So so I think we've unpacked that piece of bad advice. <laughs> that's a, that is the best question. I was so looking forward to this conversation because I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> just the question alone. <laughs> so we're hoping wrong with you. What is wrong with you? Set some goals. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Do not listen to those listen. naysayers. Don't, Don't do it. I'm telling you. All right. So, so I'm going to throw it to Mike. You have another piece of bad goal setting advice that you like to share. So the worst piece of goal setting advice that I received is put it in the universe and the <laughs> universe will deliver. <laughs> and I get it. I get it. I get it. But I am a, let me tell you what I need, what needs to happen so that I can achieve what I want to get back from the universe. So I believe in, I want to be a millionaire. Okay. The goal is how do my, the, 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 the journey is how am I going to get there? So I don't believe just mouthing the words and using the hand gestures is uh going to set it get it when it comes to goal setting i believe you have to set those goals so the universe thank you but also do the work so so wait a minute hold on hold on maisha i'm a little confused (laughs) right so you're telling me that i I can't just put a picture of a maserati on my vision board and just claim it and just set the intention for a black maserati and it's going to show up on my driveway that's not how it works no i think (laughs) you You need to know how much the Maserati costs. You need to know if you're in business, how many sales you have to make to get to the Maserati. If you are performing at the senior level manager, you need to know how much your raise has to be to get to the Maserati. And going back to what we said before, you need to know what the team is doing to help you get to the Maserati. So yeah, put it on your vision board, put it, put it out there, but don't think that's it. That is, I get so many people, I put it in the universe and it came I'm like, yeah. So would you just sat down every day going, <laughs> give me the Maserati? <laughs> nah, you did some work. You set some goals. You, you achieved something in that time period. No, thank you for sharing that. Cause that, that's a common thing that's out there too. You know, there, there's no, this have. movie, there's a movie okay. out called the secret. Well, go ahead. Tell you going to say something. No, 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 I don't interrupt you. Yeah. Okay. Now I was gonna say, you know, the movie came out the secret, and I think that really ignited a lot of that thought. That okay, all I have to do is set the intention and think about it for a long time, and it's gonna show up. <laughs> uh, there's a little more to it than that. No, yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember in a pastor from church said, uh, if he wanted something, he'd go out and get something. Like if, was a, if, a, if he wanted a BMW, he'd go out and get a a BMW keychain, mm-hmm. or a, or a BMW hat, this or whatever it was. I guess they could be that thing to, to I guess keep <laughs> to keep on track for whatever it is that he that he wants. But uh, you know, whatever it is that 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 helps you to to stay on track. I mean, as a reminder. But you know, you still got to do some work. You still got to do some work. Yeah, I think you said it. I mean, that's that's just a reminder. You got to reverse. You got to reverse engineer that thing. Mm-hmm. Say, what, you know, what what are the steps I need to take that are going to get me there so no that's good stuff so dr sharon we'll go to you with, with some bad advice around goal setting that you hear so two things come to mind with that i'm going to start with don't focus on your failures and and that's a great area because i i would say you don't focus on them but you have to learn from them so mm-hmm. you have to address them and if you don't learn from them, you're going to continuously repeat them, right? So one of the, you know, one of the big things out there is don't focus on your failures. Um, so because in goal setting, 
we're not going to achieve every goal. And so when we don't, if you just keep going, then it's probably going to happen again and again and again. So you're going to have to stop, reflect, review those failures and then move on from there. So you don't focus on them, yes, but you have to learn from them. That's one of the things I would say. My second one, Eric, is really the opposite of yours. And I've heard people say just, you know, put all your goals down for the year. You know what I mean? And that, a, a confused mind does nothing. That's first. So you really have to minimize um, and get those three to five major goals. And usually research says three. But really hone in on the three major goals that you want. Having 10 to 15 goals for the year is setting yourself up for failure. So I would I would go with one of those two. No, that's great. Both. Again, I mean, that, I run into this a whole lot, even with people that get, they're so on fire with goals. They're, they're trying to set 20. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now that's, I mean, that that's, that's fire right there. And, and then the other thing about fo- focusing on your failures, I think you, you have to keep your failures in the right perspective. Right. Right. And, and learn because, because there could be some good data in failure. Yeah. Right. There's probably more data in failure than success. That's how growth is born is through your mistakes and failures, definitely. Yeah. No, this is good stuff. I mean, I hope I hope you're as you're listening and watching, you're you're taking notes, especially when Dr. Sharon starts talking. I mean, you, That's <laughs> okay. you, 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 just, you just better. That is enough. Yeah. <laughs> Make your goal to be more like Dr. Sharon. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get some nuggets. You're gonna get some nuggets. <laughs> you're gonna get some nuggets. Whether you want them or not, you're gonna get some nuggets. Set me up. That's what y'all so, so we'll we'll be backstage talking about the show and Dr. Sharon will be like, oh, I don't know. Then get up here. Point number one is this, point number two is that. Da, 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 da. There's four. There's a there's a there's a quad there's quadrants to this. There's quadrants. <laughs> No, that's Eric, fantastic. Eric, 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 I we think love it, Dr. Sharon. It's all love. We love it. Absolutely. Trust Eric, I think, I, think, I think another one is, is just, you know, making them easy to achieve. Yes. Uh-huh. If you really got to, you, you know, make them easy to, you know, achieve, attain, you know. I, you're going to make one call a day. At least, at least one. <laughs> what? That's all you're going to do is one call a day? <laughs> I think you know you got you got to push yourself. You got. I think if you if you not if you can't feel it, you know the, the stretch, right? You know that, that's just like you know, Mike. I know you talked about working out. And if I just go down here, if I just walk down to the corner, every day I'm gonna walk down to the corner to the mailbox, and I'm you know I'm good. No, nah, you got to stretch yourself. You got to push yourself. Yeah, but I, I just say, Ted, if that's someone start, at least start there. Well, at least start. Yeah, you, you know, got to at least, at least you start there, move. but you can't keep. That's right. Stay there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Right. Six months from now, you didn't just walk down the right. corner and came back home. I I ain't lost no weight. I ain't. <sighs> yeah. I, it's funny. I just did this workout on Fit On, which I posted on my Instagram because she was the one trainer. Normally, like, if you just get up and you're up there trying, it's a, you're doing a great job. Congratulate yourself for staying up. She was like, if you feel tired in 20 seconds, you can go 10 more seconds and you can do this. She was, I mean, she gave us no reason not to complete that workout. I was like, okay, this is my new favorite trainer because she knew we were like, oh, a plank and sit up and all these other things, but she's like, you could do it. If you're not sweating, you're not working. The complete yeah. opposite of these other trainers are like, wow. as long as you're up there doing something, That's I'm like, okay, to bother yeah. you and me, we, we can roll. <laughs> yeah, Ted, Ted, you bring up a great point. I'm sorry, Dr. Shane, go ahead. No, I said that's an interesting point. Yeah. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you bring up a great point. Uh, I think I shared this on another coffee and conversation. I had somebody I was working with, and they said, oh, my goal is to have a 5% increase. And I'm like, what? 5%. Why? What, what? And, and he ended up raising his goal and he, he had a massive increase that following year. You know, and, it, and the smaller setting that really, really small goal doesn't motivate you to take action, right? Because you're going to take action. If you, have a, if you have a big, big goal, you're going to take big, big actions. You know, as opposed to if you have a small goal. I heard something where they said, you know, if it's really easy to achieve, it's, really, it's not a goal, it's more of a task. Mm. And who's really motivated to accomplish a task? Right. Yeah. That's a good one, Eric. That's a good one. That's tweetable. <laughs> Say it again. 
you know, if the goal is too small, it, it's more of a task. And you're really not going to be motivated and inspired to try to accomplish a task. That's just something to think about. And I'm just glad we're, we're unpacking all this bad advice that's out here on goal setting. So at this point, let, let's just kind of go around and, and and just share some great goal setting advice that we haven't uh, shared already. And I'll start. So, so like one of my uh, one things I picked up here recently is, you know, you set the goal. But th there's a thought now that you should really, instead of just be solely focused on the outcome, focus on the process, right? So set like if you have a vision board, right? you know, focus on sp the specific things you're going to do, especially when you don't feel like doing it. Like, for example, if your goal is to go to the gym five days a week, you know, fo put on your vision board what you're going to do on those days when you don't feel like going to the gym. Because mm. you, you know it's coming. It's gonna be that morning where you're like, oh god, no, I'm not. That was the, that was this morning. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was this morning. So so now you have a you already have it in mind that this that time is coming, and that here's what I'm going to do when that happens. You know, put a picture of yourself packing your clothes the night before or something, and having it making it easy for yourself, whatever that is. So I, I think that's great goal setting advice if you can anticipate on the front end, you know, that you may not feel like doing it. So we'll, we'll throw it around. Let's see. We'll go to uh, Dr. Sharon. Yeah. So I would just have to, you know, and I've, I've, I've often said this before, you're, you really, and you alluded to it about the big goals. Um, and we talked about it last time. Um, your goals really should involve other people. Um, and mm -hmm. I really, Great think advice. A, right. I think that's a litmus test too. Um, are your goals big enough? Um, you know, again, if you can attain it by yourself, then it's probably not big enough. Um, that's one of my go to go. One of my go to things that I think about. Who else do I need um, to help contribute to meeting my goal? <clears throat> and what is it that they need to do? So um, I would just say that um, just just keep that in mind. Uh, you can have individual goals, goals that you can attain by yourself. But your like quarterly income goals, like you, can, I mean, can you really? reach a huge goal by yourself i mean i don't think so not the goal that i'm trying to reach um i need to solicit others their expertise their time the collaboration so i will i will go with that yeah I, you said that on i remember when you said that on the other show and i agree you, you may want to consider if you can do it all by yourself the goal may not be big enough right right yeah and that's, no, that's i really believe that no, that's great you, advice. I think yeah. I think you need I think you need to remove the naysayers. That's true. Mm. Oh, gosh. Right? You know, yeah. it is a naysayer because you know I, I was in a leadership class uh, at one point. A person, said, and no matter what the organization is, there's a naysayer. There is, and the, and the, and the naysayer is looking for another naysayer. Yeah, right. <laughs> they 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 looking for somebody else that they can get to buy into their naysayism. Right. I don't know why they always trying to do this. These big girls, you know that that's tough for us to do. I mean, how do you that other person could have been on track? Right. They was right into it. Said, yeah, you can you kinda right. I mean, you know, we didn't do that much last year. I don't know why we don't you know. So that naysayer, you gotta find out, you know, who that is and uh see how you can either manage or get them up out of there. Cause that that that's all it takes. Like even when you're in a meeting, you're talking, Yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do you no know, you know, 5,000 this weekend. And that person's there. Well, I mean, do you really think we get, you know, you know, they're just, they're just a, just a, a, a downer. Now I'm not saying it's not somebody, that, you know, if they, if they, you know, bring in some insight or whatever, something to consider. Cause I think it's a way that you can say it right. too, right? Hey, you know what? Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I understand the goal. If we're going to do that, we're going to need to do this, you know? So yeah, manage that naysayer or get rid of them. It's, it's negative energy for sure that that definitely can be contagious um and and i see that as you're saying that ted i'm just thinking of how many people or how many companies or uh, organizations fail because of that um mm -hmm. and it's really in the belief you know how much do you really believe in what the mission is and the goal and the vision um because if, if belief is there you're going to do what it takes 
So, so here's something interesting on, on that point with the negativity, right? I, I, I listened to a podcast and I, I heard this and I think it's 100% true, right? You can take somebody who is really positive and bring them into like a negative organization and that person's probably not going to have a whole lot of impact. But you can take someone who's negative and bring him into a positive group and he can ruin that group, he or she. Yep, yep. that is so true. Yeah, one bad apple can ruin everything you're trying to accomplish. Mm. Mm. So, that, Ted, you're, that, that's spot on. I mean, this whole idea of you, you got to recognize and eliminate the naysayers mm -hmm. from being around you. That, that's critical. All right, Maisha. So I think the best advice I can give is keep it simple. Hmm. Um, we posted on our website a goal setting worksheet that kind of gives you three to four goals that you should reach for. And then it outlines tasks underneath there that you can do weekly, monthly, or meet with uh, us and we can help you walk through it. But the keeping it simple part works for me. Um, because my life can be so compartmentalized sometimes. So that's why we, when we started, I had my personal goal of losing weight, which I accomplished, lost, accomplished again, lost, accomplished again. <laughs> <laughs> and my professional goal of increasing leads, increasing sales for me and my other, other businesses I work for. So not trying to do too much, especially if you are a startup, um, try, not trying to do too much out the gate. And I think what Dr. Sharon said works with that, going back to your mission, going back to your vision as to why you started this goal in the first place. There's a reason why you decided that, you know, increasing your business by 10% is a goal, right? So go back to that, review back to that. And even if you have your vision board and that's on there, we talk about that as well. The visual representations of your goal is a reminder of why you did that. So I would suggest keep it simple. We don't need, as Dr. Sharon, I think said before, we don't need a hundred goals. We just want to focus on ones that impact our lives, both personally and professionally. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and this, I'm glad we're talking about this because I mean, 2023 is, literally around the corner and now is the time that we need to be thinking about this uh, and i would say also as far as great advice uh is, is time travel right if, especially if, you, if you're challenged as far as coming up with what you think your goal should be you know time travel fast forward to the future you know pretend like it's december 31st of 2023 and you're talking to your business partner and you're saying, Ted, we did it, man, Dr. Sharon, we did it, Maisha, we did it. What, what is that thing you did? You know, what, what are those three to five things? Or, or for Dr. Sharon, what are the three things you did that really make you feel like it was the greatest year for you? Um, so, so really, that, that's a good piece of advice, too, to get in the habit of time traveling. And that can help you to gain clarity on uh what you should be moving towards. All right. Th this has been a great episode so far. It it's time for our coffee break. I'm going to take out. <sighs> wow. That's some great coffee. Hmm. You didn't know coffee was orange, did you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a different type of coffee going on over here. Maisha. <laughs> well, we had our Asian baby brand. It was all about the coffee. We are looking for, now we have a new sponsor, so A Self Guru, which is a wonderful women-owned company who helps us prepare for the legal issues that we may face. More importantly, if you go to our website and download her, download the bundle or the free legal assessment, you won't have legal issues because you are already prepared. So A Self Guru, we welcome you as our coffee and conversation sponsor. Thank you for being a sponsor. And please, again, if you are, have an e-commerce website, if you have no lawyer, 
And we suggest that you add that. We talked about that at Whatnot University, adding a lawyer to your team to help you accomplish your goals. Please go to our website and check out A Self Guru, um, and she will, the, the bundle and the free legal advice will be there for you to download. Fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. And since we are the What Now movement and we're talking about goals, please go to our website and download our goal setting worksheet. That will get you ready for 2023. We're trying to help you. We're trying to help you. Just, we just want to help look, you in. Look, it's out there. It's out there. Come get, come get a plate. Come get a plate of what we what we say. Yeah. And so make your goal after coffee conversation to download the A Self Guru Legal Bundles and our goal setting worksheet. That's great. Now, and I tell you, I mean, that, that legal thing is critical. I mean, we've, you know, Ted, you and I, we've had quite a few guests on the 30 minute hour podcast who had all this momentum. And then there was a little legal, legal thing. They hadn't even legal detail. They hadn't thought about. And if they had had something like what we're talking about from a self guru, they had the templates, they had these things in place. It would save them a lot of pain and a lot of money they had to spend um, to try to, you, you always want to be playing offense. That's really the key. Not having to go back and uh, backtrack. So that's good stuff. A self guru. Uh, thank you, Maisha, for sharing that. We, we have two other uh, main pieces that we're going to discuss. Um, so one of it is going to be like follow up, right? We're talking about goal setting. We've already talked about the worst advice. We've given you great advice. I do want to go around and, and get feedback on from the different members of the what now movement team as far as what they do to follow up to make sure they are on track with their goals uh and so, so like for 2023 and going forward and then we'll even talk about later with some of our 2023 goals so dr sharon i'll throw it to you what, what are some things that you do to follow up to make sure you're on track with the goals you set yeah it's just really the the quarterly you know again i feel like you know it's repetitive but i've um, we've talked about this several times. The act assess and adjust is really the model I use each quarter to go back to see, okay, what have I done? Um, evaluate that and to make any modifications or adjustments that's necessary. And um, I do that quarterly. Um, and that, again, for this year, has truly helped with my one major goal this year um, for my business um, was getting more um, corporate ads, ads for the magazine. And so that's what I set out to do last year for this year. I've been focusing on that. That's been a target of mine. Um, I've had to make adjustments, you know, um, when I didn't hit the quarterly goal that I wanted. And I actually see progress this year. So um, that act assessment adjust helps me each and every quarter. And, and that's the one thing that I do faithfully um, at the end of each quarter. No, that's great. You know, there, there's a book um, called the 12, 12 week year that really highlights the importance of breaking things down quarterly. Um, so, you know, have, after you set that annual goal, kind of breaking it down to, okay, by the, and, and the end of the 12 weeks, what should I have accomplished? And then kind of reverse engineering that way. And I think Dr. Shane, what you said, it helps you to maintain momentum, Yeah. right? And, and you're still just as excited because, you know, we're excited in January, but it's hard to stay excited May, June, July, you know, once you start getting hit with uh, things going on in the business. No, I think that's great advice. Yeah. And for me with that, um, because I'm my because for like what I'm doing now is for next year. You know what I'm saying? Like my stuff has to be months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So which is very good for planning purposes. Um, cause I'm already into second quarter of 2023. I have to be, um, we are, you know, we, we, we are publishing things. So that takes months in advance that you have to do that. And so it's hard to think about, you know, like I just closed something that's taking place September, October, 2023. You know what I mean? Like that's like almost a year from now, but you have to, you have to make those plans for that. Great. Excellent. Uh, Maisha? Um, I, I love goals. I love the whole, <laughs> I love setting them. I love reviewing them. I love moderate, uh, changing them, adapting them. So for me, follow-up happens all the time. 
Um, what I think I'll do differently for 2023, which is something I'm going to put, you know, I've been using percentages as my revenue kind of goals. I think I'll put a number out there and march to that a little bit. I think for me, and I'll admit here, I'm always scared to put an actual dollar figure out there because that's a scary thing, but I'm all about, you know, trying to overcome my fears. But I do follow up all the time. Like it's easy when the personal goal, because you can see that my cheekbones are getting higher and thinner or, <laughs> but when it comes to the professional stuff, it's all about for me, the numbers. I look at every single piece of the, how many visits to the website, how many have, you know, have converted to sales, converted to leads, signed up. How did I do for me? Did I follow up in time? As we talked about last time, did I leave money on the table? All those questions, I go through that process probably on a monthly, definitely on a monthly basis. But if I see something, then I'll do a little bit more. So get, follow up is key to me. I don't even know how you say you're a goal achiever unless you know what you've done. As, as you said, Eric, time travel. If you do a little time traveling to see what you did right, what you didn't do right, what you could do better and move ahead from there. So. so let me ask you, Maisha, you you talked about a number instead of percentage. Do you mean uh, of clients? What what's, what's the number representing? So for me, if I'm going to do, so let's say I want to do, let, let me make my marketing agency a million dollar agency next year. Mm -hmm. So I think we talked about that before, the reverse engineering. So mm -hmm. how many clients? Okay, so the number is, is clients. And okay. actually, right. How many clients do I need? What do I have to sell to these clients to get to that number. But I always want to do better. And this is going back to, I think you talked about fear factor for me. So if I just say, oh, I'm going to raise my business by 20%. Okay. I, I actually do that every year. So I think I need to change that as one of my goals because, because of my goal achievement, I'm able to achieve that. Um, for Cuba, it was just to, this is a new business for me. So now I want to get my number of customers to convert, which will lead to revenue. So it's different types of goals. But for me, for marketing, I want to have a clear number in mind. And I'm going to reverse engineer, hopefully by January 1. So I can say, this is what I have to do. This is where I have to be more aggressive. This is where I have to, this is the most profitable uh product or solution that I have. All those things need to go into play where before it's just like, oh, I'm going to grow my business by 20% because I know I can. So that's not a, a goal that I was, I think we talked about being being scared of your goals. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared of that goal anymore. I need to change it up for 2023. No, that's great. I mean, one, one thing about math is that it doesn't lie, right? The, the numbers, then the numbers aren't emotional. It's just, it, it is what it is. And, and I think that's why you have to, it helps to break it down to a scientific <coughs> equation. And I, something quick I'll share and I'll throw it to Ted. Um, but you know, the client, a client that I was working with where, you know, we did the math and we did reverse engineered it. And we said, you know, you need to be making 10 calls a day, right? Because that's your, based on your conversion rate, you know, it takes 10 calls to get two. Da, 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 da. And so we, we did this little paperclip thing, right? So he would take. 10 paper clips, put it on the left side of his desk. Every time he made a call, he put one paper clip on the right side of the desk. So his goal, by the time the day was over, to have all 10 paper clips on the, on the other side of the desk. And he knew that day was a win. And guess what? He, he ended up exceeding the goals that we set. Uh, so, no, I think, Maisha, you're, you're right on there. I mean, I think you have to focus. You, you do need to have a focus on the numbers and know your numbers. Because math does a lot. So that's good. So, Ted? Something, one thing for me, and I know I'm not the I kind of person, right? I like, I need to just kind of talk about it, right? But I need someone with me that's good to just kind of capture it and then help me to quantify it and then help the follow up, right? Because I just, I just want to paint, right? I just want to paint this where we're going to go, and how we're going to get there, and then get somebody. <laughs> Just, just let me paint, you know, broad strokes. I'm just paint, right? And then you have some people that's just like, okay, enough of the paint. Let's put that down. Like, I think if you can get someone like that, 
if, if if you're just a painter like me to be able to do that and then be like okay we're gonna do this many calls or whatever or whatever we even come up with because it's going to be a plan when i finish the painting it's just i need someone to help keep me on track okay we said we we're going to do this many calls we said we we're going to do this and plan can be a, a great it look good. It's a good plan, but then it's like, oh man, you know, we want to scrap the plan. Well, no, because you just really didn't execute. So you need that person that can help you to, to execute, you know. And and now, you know, I kind of have that in the organization. Like everywhere around me is always somebody I know that's good at, you know, this executing, and and it's got to be somebody that's always just crazy enough to believe what I believe. Like I don't want that executor person with me to be like, oh, no, we can't do it. We can't do it. No, no, no. Now, if I say we're gonna, we, this is what we're gonna do. It's a hundred million dollars. Okay, well, let's start, you know, doing it. I mean, I, you know, and I'm, I'm dealing with that a lot now because I got, I think I've mentioned that we have, have some younger people in the company right now, and it's nothing that stops them. There's, 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 there's just nothing. I'm like, okay, well, now what kind of money you want to make next year? I want to make three hundred thousand dollars. It, that's what you want to do. Okay, but then what are we gonna do to make that happen? Okay, you know, versus. You know, others that may be like, oh, you know, that's a bit much. How do we do that? I mean, you want to have those people around you that are that are going to be able to be like, okay, is that's that, that's where we're going. That's what we're going to do. That's where the there is, right? Like we talked about, where is the there? Okay, all right, let's let's come up with the plan, and then you have those that individual or those individuals around you to just help keep you, you know, on track. Hey, this is what we said, right? Even in my meetings now, it's like I have this person I always I always say, you know. Put up, put up a sheet, right? So as we're talking, because people love to come together and talk, right? My issue, they come together and talk all day. And then you lead a meeting and you just done a bunch of talking. You know, when we lead a meeting, <laughs> it's going to be this list of stuff that we said we're going to do, these goals, these actions or whatever, that's going to hold us to something because, you know, you're sitting there talking about stuff that's just not going to get anything done. But you need that person, if you're not that person yourself, that can capture it you know, help set up some milestones or whatever. And, and you know, now they will frustrate you though, because they'll come to you and be like, well, this is what we said. This is what we said. You you want to meet this goal, don't you? You'll meet this goal. But that's the, that, yeah, I just think that's a must. If that's not you, get someone that can be that person, whether that's your partner or someone else in your organization or associate or whatever to do that, to kind of help you to to keep on track and, and 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 document whatever it is that you you know that you're gonna that you say you're gonna do. Yeah, and that that requires a level of self awareness, which I, I just think self awareness is critical to success in anything. So mm -hmm. if you know that you're not the details person, especially when, you know when it comes to goal setting, you know if you know you're not. Ted Ted makes a great point. If you know you're not the details person, surround yourself with people. Who are going to hold you to the details? Who are going to bring up the details? Yeah, uh, and that—that's what's going to help with the with the whole follow up piece. Maisha, I know you're leaning forward. You, you about to say something? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think we are. I think that's a key thing we need to really address here. Because we all have different personalities, and what works for me may not work for somebody else, even with the worst advice. And, you know, as I teasingly say, the universe, but some people, you know, you could get, some people may get overwhelmed by their world, right? So when I say keep it simple, it's for, because what that works for me, I have to stay focused on three or four things in my life. I, I'm a goal oriented person. So it's, it's, that's part of it, but we do need to be cognizant of who we are as as a person and how do we achieve what we have achieved in life so far and, and maybe that's doing the time travel right like i so i think we do jokingly say what's the worst advice but you really have to take that moment to do some self-reflection and figure out what works for you um and then that's when you can as ted said you bring in a team because you know you need certain people to help you do this and if you you need certain people who are great at this certain people who would keep you on your toes some people keep you honest so i think that self-reflection piece and understanding who you are as a person is kind of crucial before we even start talking about how do you go about achieving your goals i can't i love dr sharon but i don't think i could wake up at three o'clock in the morning and do a journal and gratitude that's not me but that's what works for her. 
And I think aspiring to be more like Dr. Sharon is great, but, but understanding who I am as a person is also important. Thank you for sharing that. No, that, that, is, that makes total, even as you're watching this episode, you know, you really have to reflect on work, what works for you. Mm. And it may, it may help having a mentor, having a coach to bring that forth. Cause you may not see it yourself. Mm. So, because it, it's one thing to say you're going to do all of these things, but then if you're not, like you said, if you're not a details person saying that you're going to, you know, do a, do a swat on yourself every day, uh, <laughs> it's probably not going to work out for you. Mm -hmm. And you'll get frustrated and give up or want to give up. So no, I, I think the self-awareness piece is critical. Pick what works for you. Um, and I'll say one of the things that works for me as far as just the follow up and staying on track, I do a weekly you probably heard me share this before. I do a weekly SWOT analysis. See, see, a <laughs> weekly SWOT. See, see what I'm saying? See, my, my, see, you and me on a team going against Eric and Dr. Sharon. <laughs> like, we don't have, we're going to have to do a little different, right? Because we all, because we already know they're reading a whole bunch of books. They're doing weekly <laughs> SWOT analysis. I mean, they're doing all type of innovative stuff. So you and I, we just going to have to beat them just on pure work. While they SWOT analysis, you know, we gonna talk to a thousand people. We gonna talk to a thousand people. They got them book receipts. That it was, those are the students. <laughs> I was in the back of the class. They was in the front of the class. That was the back of the class. But no, so it but goes yes. back to what we're saying, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like you have to do what works for you. So for me, my strengths are that I form habits very easily. And, and, and I can stay consistent with doing certain things. The weakness of that is I form habits very easily and I can stay consistent with doing things, meaning I can stay with doing something that's not working. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I can set a funny. goal that I'm going to do this and I'll just keep doing something that's not working. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and, that's, that, that's, a, that's a good point because, you know, Eric and I, we work together in a bunch of things and, and we're a great team for that reason. Right. Yes. We're a great team for that reason because Eric, Eric, it's going to get done. Like, look, Eric, we're going to have 300 calls going out to the 300 calls is going to go out. This is what's going to happen. The analytics. I mean, we're going to do it, do it, do it. And I'm like, all right, Eric, well, you know, we've been doing it six months and ain't nothing really happening. So we might want to change it up a bit. What? What do you mean it's not work? Right. And it might be a tweak or something. Right. Yeah. It might be a tweak or something. But the good thing about it, though, is it's going, you know, whatever you, whatever you putting in the gumbo. But right, we're gonna keep putting it in, in in the gumbo every day, you know. And and I think it's good if you have that, you know, that team, you know. Because sometimes I've heard people say in partnerships, oh, you know, you need to have, you know, somebody some differences. It's okay to have differences, right? And I do think that it's okay to have differences as long as you're both trying to get to the same place. Exactly. Like you have some core things that are, are the same, right? But if you're, you know, if it's always you're, you know, you're always saying the glass is half full and the other person saying it's half empty. That that that's tough. But if it's like, okay, yeah, you know what, we're doing some good things. We, you know, we, there's some good activity, but we may need to stop and 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 tweak it because we're not getting the results that we we want. And then once you stop, because you know, again, Eric is is Eric is one of the most structured people I've you know I know, and that's a good thing. You know what's coming. You know, you know what's coming. It's just where it is. So that's a that's a good thing. Me, yeah, I'm a little different. I can be all over. You know, so I get on that. Get all. I go all over the place. I love it. Yeah. And so for me, out, yeah, uh, that that's. I'm sorry, the, to, I'm sorry, but I just want to say we do need to fill out, figure out a team building workshop. The Eric and Dr. Sharon against Ted and myself. That would, be. that would be hilarious. That'd be hilarious. They'll bring we'll something. Like, I told you. You're at the finish line already. Man. Already? <laughs> oh, already? Shh, boy, they done put that. Yeah, boy, so they done put something done. together. Yeah. Shh, man, we done. We done. We done. So, we so done. for me, that what you just said is the, the reason I've embraced this weekly SWAT. And so sometimes I can catch the pattern, right? Okay, I'm mm. doing this and it's not moving the needle. So now I need to try something different. Um, so definitely if you're, you're watching and you're that type A personality <laughs> that did, try that, try doing that weekly SWAT. I've had a, a few uh, people I work with uh, as far as clients try and it's helped, but that's mm -hmm. just an idea. But the key get, like Maisha said earlier, get something that works for you uh, and just make sure you've got some system in place to follow up, especially 
for those times when you know you're not going to feel like doing certain things. Make sure you you got something in mind and a, a track and a system. So now, now I think it's a good time for us, Maisha. Can you post? I mean, if you don't mind sharing your SWAT in our Facebook group, because I would love to see what that looks like. It, it, it could be all. Oh, I just want to see, not to get in your personal stuff, but I think sharing that SWAT that you do weekly with some mm -hmm. awesome posts will be get a lot of engagement in our you, What Now you, Movement get, Facebook. Look at you. Get, get, I'm trying to tell you, folks, get your plate. Come get some of this what we serve. Come get some of this or what we serve. You get a weekly squad analysis here. Well, can you do that for free? Right. Well, right. A weekly mm. personal squad analysis. Come on. Where are you going to get that? Mm. <laughs> and and it may, you know, like I said, I, I, one thing is I love learning. This is why I love doing this every month and actually meeting with the What Now movement and actually reading some of the posts that we get because I'm always open to learn. Yeah. And that's one of my strengths. And I, if if something seems interesting, which a weekly SWAT does, I can commit to it for four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but if I see results in my own in my own life, then that's something I can add to the plate. But I will not knock it until I try it. It gets you, it gets you to be more proactive, and mm. you start you you get on you get out in front of things quicker. And you mm. change things uh, with, without someone else having to bring it to your attention. You know, you, you start to make those necessary changes as opposed to just continuing to do something and nothing and, you, and the needle's not moving. So, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll certainly post that. Yeah, post uh, the press. For people to see. CEO, motivate us. <laughs> Empower us. That's right. So, so let, let's, uh, I, I want to get some examples just from us as far as what, what are some of our 2023 goals uh, for the coming year, and, and I'll start. I'll start. I'll share one of mine. We, we'll go around. So for the podcast, the thirty-minute hour, uh, I want to see twenty thousand or more downloads a week. Is what I'm. Uh, is is one of the big goals uh, that I have, and so I know for the previous year, I was always saying ten thousand, and, and we were much lower than that when I first started saying it. And then here recently, we've gotten to twelve. Like the past couple of weeks, twelve thousand downloads. So that that's something that I'm working towards. And um, and, and by the way, thank thank you, those of you out here who are sharing the show and listening to us uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but definitely, that that's just one of the goals that that I'm working towards because we want, really want to inspire people and get the message out to as many people as possible. Okay, so let's see. We'll go to Ted. So <clears throat> in, in my firm, I mean, one of the biggest things I want to do is increase, you know, proposals that are going out per month, you know, and try to find out what that <clears throat> what that sweet spot is. And then in, in both government and in the in the private sector. And so trying to come up with that with that uh, with that number, what that's going to look like if it's, you know, you know, two per month, two to three. You know, I was talking to one company one time and they said, yeah, we're going to do 100 proposals this year. And I was like, wow, like how you do that? You know, but you know, the thing was I talked to someone else in that same company and that person said the same thing. So that was a goal that they had set. And, you know, they got I was like, how many people you guys have? Like and your core group is gonna do that. So I was like four of us. I'm like, okay. Now, you know, <clears throat> in order to do that, there's yeah, you, know, you have to figure out some repeatable processes and things like that to do. But so yeah, so we want to look at how we can you know, make it more quantifiable because I think Eric, as you you know, I mean, as far as the emails that we've been sending out, right? I mean, we've been sending out, you know, guess a couple hundred emails a week, and you get a and you get a lead here and there, but they're always but the, some of those leads have been great leads, mm -hmm. and it's just you know if you but if you think you're gonna go out and put out a you know a couple hundred emails a week and you're gonna get the bites. For every email you're not, but but if you just continue to you know be persistent, you know in doing that, you know like you'll you know you'll see the you know you'll see the results. And so proposals, uh, emails, and then the other thing is just looking at everything, just looking at everything. Like you know, I think that you're always trying to you know look at what you're doing and seeing how you may be able to uh, improve it, even if you, even if it's been successful. I think it always can be, you know, tweaked. I think it's always good to have 
to have these types of sessions sessions where you get to hear from you know other people and what they're doing and see if it's something you can apply to your own environment no that's great and i thought and you and i are in a uh, on one of our business ventures i thought it was very effective uh and dr sharon as well um we, we talked about how many bids per month you know how many customer meetings do we want to have how many industry events are we going per quarter i mean i i just thought that was highly that was a very effective approach to goal setting uh, for the coming year but good stuff all right dr sharon yep so for me for vision and purpose lifestyle magazine by the end of first quarter 2023 my goal is to have all of my ad spaces for 2024 so hmm. there you go yeah oh that's powerful so just like what what was your process for kind of knowing that that's really what you need to be that's a huge that's an important goal like what was your process for knowing that that yeah dr sharon yes because that's what that's where the money comes i mean that's where that's what pays the bill <laughs> i mean yeah yeah that's what yeah ad spaces is how we survive you know? yeah with the cost of printing you know you don't the money isn't made on the sale of the magazine um it's made on the ads so that's yeah good no that's great maisha well, I already talked about, I'm going to put a number to my revenue growth for, this is for customer first marketing for Cuba. I just need to double, maybe triple the number of customers on the website that have subscribed. That's going to be pretty easy. I got people on the site, but subscriber is a whole new thing. And personally, um, I took a year off from volunteering. And look what happened to the world when I did that. So I want to figure out, you know, what can I do in 2023 to impact the world um, in my own way? Great. Good, good, good. You see, on, on the What Now movement, we, we practice what we preach, right? We, we talk about goals. That's been a theme of most of our coffee and conversations. And we're, we're living by that and, and setting goals. Uh, and and trying to demonstrate what, what what you should be doing to to move to that next level. So yeah, this has been a an amazing episode. Uh, a lot of great takeaways came out of it. A lot of tweetable quotes. So this is when you want to go back and and hit the rewind button. And we listen. also we also always want you all to feel free to to share your you know, approaches to doing right. things and yes. testimonies or whatever to share because we can all, we're all in this together. Again, this is a, this is a big potluck. Everybody bring a dish. Everybody bring a dish. Don't just come in and get eat. Bring, bring a dish. So you got something that you can share, please send it in or whatever because it definitely can help someone else. Sure. I mean, there's not just one right way and you, I think mm -hmm. Maisha hit it earlier and you have to do what works for you. So yeah, feel free to share. All right. So as we come down the home stretch, please don't forget that you can go to the whatnowmovement.com website and you can enter your email address and join the movement and get all of that great communication and the blogs and you can watch us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, the What Now Movement YouTube channel. You can check check out our previous summits. Uh, you can also get the book, The What Now Mindset. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> We're just trying to help you. We're trying to help y'all. Y'all just don't know. Man. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So, the thing about it, everything starts with a mindset, right? Before you yeah. want to, before you can really pivot, you have to make sure you've got the What Now Mindset. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get that book. Maisha, anything else? we need to let the people know about before we sign off. Okay, so website, on our website, don't forget to download our goal setting worksheet, especially as you prepare for 2023. Don't forget to go to our partner page. You can become a partner of the What Now Movement. You can become a sponsor of Coffee and Conversation and hear us talk about your wonderful company to our, how many people was that, Eric, are listening to the show? <laughs> oh, so it's 12,000 downloads a week. 12,000 down, 12,000 people will hear your brand. 
Um, but most importantly, just join the What Now movement and become part of our family that we want you, companies, entrepreneurs, senior level managers to grow and be ready for what's next. Great. Oh, Again, great episode. That's our time for this week or this month's coffee and conversation. We look forward to seeing you for the next edition. And until then, have a great one. Share the show. Share the show. Share the show. Share the show. I love when they say that. Share the show.